first, we need to find something. Hmm, hang on, let me just... No, not you. Aha, found it. Truly, a piece of history. Let me just see how well this holds up. Ah, yes, just how I remember it. Can someone please call a fireman? 2K20 deserves to be locked up for the absolute atrocities it's committed. I mean, just look at this footage, then try and tell me that you can't see anything wrong with it. I don't know. Looks alright to me. I'm convinced 2K was fully aware this game was a national health hazard, and without Ukes to help fix it, they just shipped it out to the nearest GameStop and then prayed to God for some sort of miracle. Oh, and if you don't know who Ukes is, they help make all these games. The phrase Chad comes to mind. Anyway, two days later, the developers were probably peacefully hiding in 2K Towers until there was a knock at their door. Safe to say, people weren't exactly happy. The game was undoubtedly a massive disaster, filled with more bugs than the ones under your bed, and 2K couldn't even give the game away if they tried. Fast forward one year, 2K has gathered together all the greatest minds to try and figure out what to do next. So these are the issues from the last game, how about we fix all of them and actually make a well put together- What about wrestling, but with Fortnite? By god you're right. So they made WWE Battlegrounds, and it was... Crap. Crap. Mega crap. What? Let's fast forward another year. Alright guys, we've skipped a year, so how about we start making 2K22? Wait, where are you all going? Come on guys, I'll have loot boxes, I swear. However, despite nobody having any faith in 2K whatsoever, they ignored all the negative publicity and got to work creating the next big wrestling game. Then on the 8th of March 2022, after months and months of hard work, it was finally ready. WWE 2K22. But first, add time. Excuse me, have you heard of today's sponsor? So please explain who you are and why. Well, it's Raid Shadow Legends. Raid Shadow Legends is a free-to-play RPG video game that you can play from the comfort of your own phone. Elden Ring, who needs that when you have Raid Shadow Legends? Discover the Doom Tower with 120 floors filled with fantastic enemies for you to fight. New bosses and heroes like this one guy from Game of Thrones. They've even got a whole new faction and quite possibly the biggest new addition to the game, the Hydra Clan. It's also Raid's third birthday and naturally we're celebrating in style. But Raid wants to share its gifts with you. Oh, aren't you a good boy? Like new champions, new artifacts, and a fully personalized video showing everyone's Raid glow-ups. Download Raid now by using the link in the description or this obnoxiously large QR code to get a huge B-Day package worth over $40. Just look at all these epic rewards you can get. Misery Cord, Romero, and Tiger Soul? Plus 10 times Brew XP for Magic, Force, and Spirit? Oofed, sign me up right now. What are you waiting for? For, go here to claim all these epic rewards while you still can. Oh, that's not it though, because all new and existing players can get a bunch of birthday gifts worth over $25 when you use the promo code Free Your Raid. Just look what I got. With all this great stuff, you're not going to need any other games. All you need is Raid. Download it right now. I said do it right now. Now before the game came out, 2K obviously put together the best trailer they could edit on Premiere Pro, and in fairness to them, the game actually looked very smooth and well polished, along with the graphics making the wrestlers look like normal human beings instead of wanted serial killers. But everyone was still pretty skeptical. I mean if marketing has taught us anything over the past few years, it's to never trust anyone. So now it's March 8th and everyone has bought a copy of 2K22, along with several boxes of tissues and five cans of Monster. You know, to ease the pain if it's bad. I quickly ran home, installed the game and mentally prepared myself to see the most horrifying creatures imaginable. But when I opened my eyes and seen what was on my TV screen, I was shocked. I mean, if I was purely judging this game on how it looks, it'd be solid tens all round. 2K clearly took the, um, constructive criticism from the last game and made sure to make this game look fucking beautiful. Wow, I'd write right on her. I mean, just look at some of these big boys. They look like they've been genetically engineered to fight God and devour whole planets. The game undeniably looks fantastic, and if you think otherwise, I'm sorry sir, you have a brain Disorder. My brain is injured. Ow. Okay, admittedly some models look weird, and certain hairstyles still have a spaghetti-like quality to them, but besides that, this game still looks pretty great and is a massive improvement from the last one. Which, then again, wouldn't be too difficult. On a real though, the wrestlers here look like they've been sculpted by Da Vinci himself, with the lighting, dynamic entrances, improved no, facials and right lovely sweat, making me want to kiss these beautiful gentlemen. However, looking great is only one thing, because as we all know, there's been plenty of games that have stunning 8K graphics, but then play like they've been programmed by your Uncle Todd. All of this just works. In saying that though, I am pretty excited to see how this... Oh. Well that's a great start, isn't it? Okay, to be fair, besides a few clunky moments, the gameplay here for the first time in what feels like an eternity is actually pretty good. 
I mean, the bar was in hell, but 2K22 easily cleared it and exceeded any expectations I had for this game. Although I will admit I didn't exactly have high ones to begin with. Now, the game's marketing heavily featured the phrase, it hits different. Oh, and honestly, they weren't wrong because it's actually fun to play, being the perfect mix of the arcade-like gameplay seen in Here Comes the Pain and the simulation-like gameplay seen in 2K19, creating this handsome game. See, other than ironing out a lot of the problems seen in the past games, 2K has also decided to heavily strip this game down, throwing any unnecessary features like the stamina bar right out the window. This results in a game that can best be described as chaotic as fuck. The pacing is unbelievably fast-paced with most wrestlers running around like they've downed 17 energy drinks along with two whole bags of LSD. And honestly, whoever made the decision to make the game like this, give them a raise right fucking now. The frantic energy just makes matches so much more enjoyable, with every match having a great flow to it as you inflict some much needed brain trauma. Here's a plaster for that. Like I'd 100% rather have wrestlers moving around at the speed of F1 cars than have them move about as quickly as the spirit of your granddad. Wait. Where did he go? Sure, it's more realistic to have them getting tired and needing their inhaler mid-match. However, instead of doing this, wouldn't it be funner to just fight your own lungs? I don't know where I was going with this. Uh, basically, slow, bad, fast, good. Gameplay is much improved with some lovely new moves and cool combos. Oh, that's a nice headlock, sir. 2K have also improved upon small details like making the blood look like actual blood rather than just looking like you smeared jam all over your face. And they've even included the Thunderdome in here which is quite frankly a terrifying experience. Now obviously, not everything is perfect. There's a ton of clunky moments, top rope moves have an issue of simply not working, and sometimes matches just break. Take for example, this universal mode match that's seen me versus two middle-aged British men. Big Chungus has launched a military coup. Well, the match started off with me arguing with an invisible presence, and then I left. However, the match didn't end there, and I was presented with this screen. This was slightly confusing. The tables also made me severely upset on multiple occasions because they collapse if you so much as breathe on them, clearly because they're accident proof. But honestly, I can look past all that shit because the raw gameplay here is by far the best it's ever been in this whole 2K series. And yeah, that might not be saying much, but I'm at the very least enjoying playing this game rather than wanting to throw myself in front of a moving train. Oh, quick, I've gotta get around. Naturally, there's also some returning game modes here like universe mode where you can book matches, rivalries, and make anyone you want WWE champion. Or you have Showcase Mode, which this time focuses on the career of Rey Mysterio, playing through his most notable matches, like his classics with Eddie Guerrero, and of course his best match to date, fighting his left knee. But in all honesty, I didn't care about any of this stuff, because the one thing 2K would not shut the fuck up about since this game was announced was the return of General Manager Mode. Now the last time GM Mode was seen in a WWE game was in SVR 08, with the mode seemingly going missing ever since. This news of course made fans of the series ever so slightly upset, and they've been campaigning to see this mode put back into the games for like the last 10 years. So with finally coming back to the series, the big question is, is it any good? And honestly, it's not. See, in the older games, you had a ton of variety as to what you could book. If you wanted to have Sandman stealing John Cena's wife, you could book that. If you wanted to have a really small man versus a really large man, you could book that. If you wanted to have Undertaker run his own cooking show, you probably couldn't book that, actually. Anyway, my point is, you had a lot of choice in these older games, right down to paying wrestlers medical bills. Oh wait, it says right here you're an independent contractor. Guess no free healthcare for you. However here, there just isn't that much to do. Sure, there's some good aspects, like getting DMs from wrestlers asking you for different stuff, gaining different perks, like being able to stop specific wrestlers from appearing on rival brands, Stop right there, criminal scum! and using your money to get better equipment for shows. But other than that, this mode is pretty bare bones, only allowing you to book free matches per show, no tag or mid card traps allowed, and I'm not gonna lie, I'm like 90% salty that the AI managed to get a 5 star match with fucking Lana. That's simply not possible. There's no real sense of risk here either, like I could probably just throw 100k in the shredder and still be confident that at the end of the week I would somehow make a profit. The mode just lacks so much of the same depth that was seen in the older games that it isn't engaging enough to keep my attention for longer than 5 minutes, and ultimately it's pretty disappointing. So at this point you start to think that 2k would be getting a little nervous. I mean, if GM mode isn't good, what's going to keep that player count high? But then the sky opened up and down from the heavens came the saving grace this game needed, My Rise. And when I seen this mode, I certainly did rise. <laughs> Basically, My Rise is this game's version of a career mode, and given how 2K have handled career modes in past installments, 
I wasn't entirely confident going into this. Please back up. Stop. <laughs> Stop. Then I realized absolutely nothing was locked behind a paywall, and naturally I celebrated like any British man would. 2K in the last few games had developed a nasty habit of making you steal your dad's credit card just so you could afford back hair. However, this year 2K was clearly inspired by famous YouTuber Mr. Breast, and now everything's free, which means you can get all the back hair your arms can carry. On real, it's pretty sick that you can actually make your wrestler look exactly how you want this time round, with all the customization options at your fingertips. So with that in mind, I put my best art attack jumper on and created this beautiful man. I am not a mustache. Fan, it, especially with the twelve. Ugh. Anyway, at the start of my rise, you choose whether you want to be a man or a woman. Then you decide their backstory before joining WWE. Whether they were a movie star, UFC fighter, Olympian, or indie wrestler. And after you finish writing the lore, you start your journey to become the next John Cena. Boobies. Starting out at the performance center, learning all the moves, then working your way up to shows like SmackDown and all the pay-per-views, winning as much gold as you can get your little hands on, so you can sell it on eBay. And while I may have been pretty cynical going into this, after playing Playing for a couple of hours, a weird thing started to happen to me. I was actually enjoying myself. Obviously, it isn't perfect, like some of the voice acting is a little Look, I could just approach this like some kind of farewell tour. Awkward. And not to mention certain wrestlers sound like they recorded the lines on a Nokia brick. A shady liar, a cheat and the man who is going to take your title. Also, I will admit, these parts where you're just talking to wrestlers backstage don't particularly look great with the weird lighting, but then again, neither would anyone with a flash shining in their face. Besides that though, everything else is pretty great. <laughs> it generally feels like 2K have taken the chains off you this year, letting you pretty much have the freedom to do whatever you want from deciding what brand you want to be on, choosing whether to be a face or a heel, and of course having a slight impact on what storylines happen. And believe me when I tell you, the storylines here are are just pure cinema. <laughs> Some of the stories here make absolutely no fucking sense whatsoever, but they make this game an absolute blast from start to finish, so much so that I'm going to ask for its hand in marriage. A few of my personal favourite storylines include the time I had a match with WWE's resident wig dealer, only for it to be interrupted by Goldberg because he didn't like something Matt tweeted. Then Goldberg just disappeared from the story entirely, a lot like my dad. Or there was another time I had a scrap with Rey Mysterio where he concussed me so badly I started fighting the ghost of Eddie Guerrero. It's Eddie Guerrero! I am so confused right now. My rise doesn't take itself too seriously at all, embracing the utter stupidity of pro wrestling, and it benefits from that so much, having a similar vibe to the season modes of past games. Sure, it isn't a gripping narrative masterpiece written by three Kojimas, but it is just dumb fun for out, and overall, it probably cured my depression, so it 100% deserves Game of the Year. And the 2021 Game of the Year is... WWE 2K22. And one last note, my rise at the very least remembers to keep everything simple and not try to overcomplicate itself with stuff like, oh, I don't know, renaming a wrestler Spoon because one killed his Uncle Ben. This man killed my uncle and he's still out there. 2K22 genuinely surprised me. Sure, there's still a few persistent issues here and there, but in comparison to 2K20, this game feels like the second coming of Jesus Christ. General Manager mode is the only real letdown here because it isn't great, but everything else from its gorgeous graphics and scrumptious gameplay to the ridiculous career mode makes playing this game an actual fun time, rather than a form of torture. Again, it's far from perfect, but it's definitely a step in the right direction, meaning I can finally stop playing 2K19. Rest in peace, King. Wait Alex, you forgot about my faction mode. Oh, did I? Well, let me just boot up and see. Yeah, nah, I'm alright. Let me just see what else is on. Giant bear head, clamp down on your dick and your asshole. 